Hey, Matt, all your experience, how hard is it the toughest part of playing three and three if you get to the championship game? Um, you know, just over the years, uh, I found it to be tough and tough to find wins and keep going and and stay healthy and, and fight through fight through the fatigue. Um, but I think at this time in March, this is what you live for as a player, um, and especially just here um, at, at San Diego State. Uh, we live for March. Uh, we we get better as the year goes on, um, and right now we're we're reaching our optimal point and getting there to, toward the end of the year. I don't think we'll run out of gas. Um, can we talk for just a second about uh, the toughest part of being a player during the pandemic? Uh, scariest part for you? I'm not talking about basketball. I'm just talking about interactions, testing, the great unknown. What, what's been the hardest part of being a player going through this? I think the hardest part um, has been the mental toll, um, just as far as um, not being able to go anywhere, mm. not being able um, to – Really step outside of your hotel room, um, step outside of your hotel uh, unless you're on your way to shoot around or on your way um, back from shoot around going to get a, going to get a snack. Um, so it, it's very very little that you're you're able to do, um, and so I, I think to to that point mentally not being able to to be free um, and do what you please um, here and now and going to the store and, and going to the beach get your mind off things is things that I've, I've said before. Um, and and touched on and speaking to mental health um, of these players um, and as well as myself um, is just rough um, on your mind on your brain um, your your mental. And one other question: Is there some intangible that has made Brian Dutcher such a quality head coach and continued what this program has become and what Steve Fisher handed off to him? Is some something unique about him you can explain? His patience. Um, uh, I think Jordan and I have uh, talked about that a number of times over the last four years. Um, I think Dutch's patience uh, with, with the players, with the program, um, has been amazing just, just over the years. Uh, and especially just being here and being able to see the, uh, the highs and the lows, um, the ups and downs during the season, um, and always seeing Dutch being even kill um, and really patient with his team. Um, and he was patient with us this year. He's been patient with the the, prog the progress um, moving forward through the pandemic, um, and so he he really um, showed us how to be patient and, and wait for our moment. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Paul. Hey Matt, um, you obviously won the tournament your freshman year. Um, how satisfying would it be to win kind of bookends of your career to have another conference tournament championship? I think it'd be very satisfying. Um, I think that's uh, all that I could ask for, uh, Jordan and I, and, and all these uh, seniors we have with us, um, Trey and, and, and Terrell, um, Josh. I think that would be the great way to end it. Um, but uh, going into it, we just got to take it one game at a time. Um, and so uh, right now we're, we're taking it one step at a time, um, moving into practice and preparing for the tournament. Um, but once we get there, it's one game at a time. We're not looking ahead at anybody. Throughout the year, you've been leading this team, um, trying to emphasize that idea of playing off script, making plays outside of the offense. Um, did you have this time of year in mind as you were leading them in that direction? Uh, I'm sorry, you said to have this type of year in mind? Um, I'm sorry, I said, did you have this time of year in mind? Time. Were, you, were you preparing them for, you know, the games that are obviously very close and things of that nature at this time of year? Of course. Um, I think in practice we go at each other every day and force each other to make plays, um, force each other to, to move outside of our comfort zones. Um, I think we know each other pretty well. Um, uh, the, the coaching staff puts uh, scouts together entirely well, and they know our IQ is so high. Um, so we have our own scouting report on each other. Um, and so when we play in practice, we know our strengths, we know our weaknesses, and we, we make each other um, go off script and, and might jump a play. Um, and so just in practice um, and outside of practice, uh, being able to play one-on-one, -on -one, being able to work on, work on those moves, work on getting to your spot. Um, and so I definitely think that's important to do and something that we work on, something that we actually have, have done over the course of the year, preseason, um, moving into it, making sure guys are, are, are crisp and, and know what they're doing. Thank you, man. Thanks, Paul. Let's go to Darnay. Hey, Matt, have you noticed when you've gotten to those championship games, guys from 
from both teams tanks running a little bit low and, and has that does that change the feel of the game at all especially since you've been in these close games kind of down the stretch definitely i i've i've seen the tank run low um before and, and have been there in the situation um and once once you get there it's all about your mental it's all about how hard you can dig dig in deep mentally um because at that point um uh, i think uh mental toughness um reigns over everything else um i, I think um over the season you prepared physically um agility wise anything and everything you could have done so at that point it's all mental um and so moving into it um that that will be something that that we look on and talk about is fighting through fatigue and so um, I think uh, moving here at the end of the year, um, I think we've always gotten better, um, always found a way to stay in shape and, and, and grind through these hard moments. It was obviously disappointing for you guys um, the way the tournament finished last season against Utah State, but you kind of had the, um, the parachute of a potential one or two seed in the NCAA tournament. And that falls through. I was curious, once that happened, how that impacted your outlook on that loss to Utah State. And now when you have another opportunity like that, where you're pretty much in the tournament, don't necessarily need to win three games to get in, how that impacts your outlook this time around, given the experience and, and what played out last year? Um, well, well, given the experience that we had last year, um, I think uh, winning would be our best bet. And going into this uh, – uh, with our full 100% effort, um, I don't think we're we're looking to to not necessarily win any of these three games. Um, going into this, we won the Mountain West Tournament Championship, um, and looking into it, seeing Utah State on the other side, and and, and um, seeing the the animosity that it brings, um, uh, the remembrance that it brings, and I think this is my uh, three out of four times um, being on the opposite side of uh, Utah State and, and potentially meeting in the championship, and so that's something that would be. Uh, something to look forward to, I, I think, for fans. Um, but as players, uh, um, like I said, one game at a time. Uh, we're not looking ahead of anybody. Thanks, Matt. Good luck this week. Thanks, Darnay. Let's go to Mark. Uh, Matt, the media came out with their postseason awards today. Um, should should Coach Dutcher have been the coach of the year? Biasly, um, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I think uh, Coach Dutcher has – shown that he that he is the coach of the year he, he did last year uh, we had we had the best record again um and so um somewhat uh yeah biasly i of course i would say coach dutch is the best coach in the conference um but i, I think uh votes are votes um and we're we're just all about winning here um when you guys came back home um after UNLV, you know, you cut down the nets at you know two thirty three in the morning. I saw a video of you cutting the last one down. Just tell me what that experience was like, uh, kind of being blurry eyed, but getting to do that. Uh, it's it's great to have another one. It's great to have another net to to be able to put up and and show off. Um, I think that's a moment that I'll never be able to forget. Um, is coming back and cutting nets down at two thirty three in the morning is uh, I think something not a lot of people can say they did. Um, so. Uh, I'll definitely take that one with me um, as I go down my, my life, uh, my path. Um, but just moving forward, uh, I think uh, this, this is just something along the way. Uh, There's something to pick up along the way and keep going, uh, keep taking it, use, using it as uh, motivation. And speaking of really early mornings, um, you're going to have to get up and do a 6.15 a.m. test on, <laughs> on Thursday morning. As an athlete, as someone you know, who, who looks after their body, um, how hard is that? And, and you know, the, the Pac-12 on any early game just says you can test the night before. Do you wish that the Mountain West would have adopted those same protocols? Uh, likely so, yes. Um, I think that would uh, benefit everybody to, to get a little bit more sleep. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, we're prepared for it. Um, I think that, that, yes, it is rigorous on your body being up and having to um, be up that early and move your sleep back a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I think we're prepared for it. Uh, we wake up uh, 7 a.m. workouts um, and get up pretty, pretty early, have to get in um, to, the, to the building, check in. Um, you, you have to sign a form 30 minutes before you get in. Um, so I think guys are, are up and moving um, pretty, pretty early and, and will be prepared for it. Um, but I do uh, see its uh, tolls um, that it may take on you.